Hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. And uh, we are here today, back in Orlando, Florida, after seven and a half months traveling. You may notice, because our brother, Mark Suetos, is with us once again. Yay! And it's good to have you back, brother. <laughs> Thank or you. Have us back. One of us, One some of us, of us are back. Back together. Yes. Better than any, yeah. Good to be back together, together again. again. Okay. Hallelujah. So here we are, and we're continuing on in our study of, uh, as we're going on in search of Christianity, looking for real Christianity, we started just a couple of weeks ago looking at the evidence of a redeemed life. Because if you're going to look for true Christianity, the first place you need to look is in the mirror. That's right. To make sure that that real Christianity, that real biblical faith, exists in your life. And, and the best way to test for that is based on the words of Jesus Christ in the Sermon on the Mount. You will know them by their fruit. So we're looking at the fruit of the Holy Spirit now. We, we started this, and last week, in our last session, we talked about love. That's the first of the fruits that you find in Galatians chapter 5. Because that is the evidence of a redeemed life. All right. So we're continuing on, and this week we're going to look at joy, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Hey. Hallelujah. We like joy. I like joy a lot. Hallelujah. So before we do that, I'm going to ask Mark. Why don't you ask God's blessing on our time together today? Oh Lord, we just thank you for the Word as a guide to our lives, yes. and just. Let us see it more clear, clearly so we can follow it more nearly. Amen. 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 So, as I said, last week we looked at love. Okay, we did, the, we did an introduction, mm -hmm. and then we did, looked at love for the last two weeks, actually. So the next fruit of the Holy Spirit is joy. Now, God is a God of good order. Absolutely. He doesn't do things accidentally. No. There is a reason to... The, system, the order of the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So from love, it goes to joy. And I've talked about, let me, where does joy come from? From hearing. Well. From hearing the voice of the bridegroom. Alice is absolutely correct because that's what John the Baptist said. Mm -hmm. He said his joy was made complete because he had heard the voice of the bridegroom. That's almost like, okay, that's the, that's the symptom What's the underlying truth? You know, where, you know where real joy comes from? Where does real joy come from? Hello. <laughs> Love. Yes. Love. Yes. You know, you can look at somebody who's just got a, a promotion at work or somebody who just bought a new car. They may be happy, all right? And there's a difference between happiness and joy. We're going to talk about that. But real joy comes from love. I mean, show me... Somebody who's just fallen in love. Mm -hmm. And look at those two people. It doesn't matter. There's a song. I don't... Want to sing a song with us? Sure. I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. Uh, are there stars out tonight? I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. For I, I only have eyes. eyes for you. Want me to sing for you? Sure. Don't have to. <laughs> All right. The point is that when you are truly in love... It doesn't matter whether it's cloudy or You're bright. The, the, everything. the circumstances yeah. don't matter. That's right. What matters is that love. Mm -hmm. I mean, just find two people, two newlyweds. I mean, mm -hmm. that, that, may, that may not be an easy task in this day and age. No. But in any event, when you find people who are truly in love, mm -hmm. you will see the evidence of joy in their lives, mm -hmm. on their faces, mm -hmm. when they look at each other. Right. And if you think that's wrong, trust me, go in and look in the Song of Solomon. And see where it talks about. And I, you know, I've shared this verse a lot of times in a lot of different places. It talks about when Alice walks into a room, it makes my heart beat faster. That's scriptural. Yes. That's what the Word of God says. What gives you that joy, what, what makes your heart alight, is, is love. Mm -hmm. How important is love? Very it's the first of the first fruits, so I'd say it's really important. And the first For God's of the letters soul. to love. the seven churches... In the book of Revelations, is to Ephesus. Yes. And Ephesus is being, Ephesus was a powerful, powerful church that God used the Apostle Paul to start and it spread Christianity all through Asia Minor, what is Turkey today, all right? Mm -hmm. What he had against Ephesus? You had lost, lost your first, first love. love. You've left your first love. Mm -hmm. Left or lost? Left. left. 
you left your well you, you, that well, the point is that first love that glow of love mm -hmm. isn't there how is that evident because the joy isn't there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you see joy has to be independent of circumstance right. happiness is tied to circumstance yes absolutely but joy is not now that's really really key to walking in true Christianity, being able to walk in faith, mm -hmm. is being able to have joy regardless of the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Because if your life, if your feelings are controlled by the circumstances you're in, well, you know it says in Psalms, many of the afflictions of the righteous. That's right. Now the Lord does deliver us from them all, but the fact is you're going to have these tribulations. And if they rob you of your joy, well, you're going to leave your first love. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Because this is what God, what Jesus talked about when he talked about the parable of the sower and the seed. It's the concerns of the world right. that can choke the word of God. Okay? And it goes back to the steadfast love. The steadfast. Hesed. Yes. You know, in, in Paul's letter to the Galatians, uh, where he talks about joy being the fruit of the Holy Spirit, there's a Greek word that's used, and I'm not, I'm not going to be a Greek scholar here or anything, but it's kara. And, and that is, it appears 59 times in the New Testament, in the King James. And of the 59 times it appears, over 90% of the times it's translated as joy. Mm -hmm. There's another word, entirely different, makareos, which, is, which appears 50 times also in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. And that's translated over 90% of the time as blessed, happy. happy. You see? There's a difference between the two. Now, there's nothing wrong with being happy. No. Happy. <laughs> Alice is going to sing happy for you. There's nothing wrong with being happy, but if that's based on the circumstance, then you know what? The world can rob that from you easily. Yes. But when your joy is based on your love relationship with God, and trust me, it's all about love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Where does it start? That's where it starts. Absolutely. It all starts with love. And he loved us. Before, Before we, we even knew him. Well, he because we were, th that's how we know what love is, because he loved us while we were yet sinners, right? Yes. While we, we didn't were, love him. We were his enemy. So, when you study the Word, and you combine that study with a conversation with the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. it has to reveal to you that there's a difference between the two, between joy and happiness and being blessed, all right? While conditions can and frequently do coexist, those three things, they're not dependent on one another. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you think about being blessed, that means something good is happening in your life, right? When you're happy, it's because something good is happening. Those are things that are a circumstance. Right. Now, there's nothing wrong with good circumstance. Yeah. But the reality of life is, I don't know how, how old you are as you sit there and watch this, but I'm old enough now, I promise you, to know that lots of bad things happen. Yes. And bad things can happen to good people. That's right. Right? Many of the afflictions of the righteous. Yes. But by the way, those bad things, everyone, you know, this is the confidence we have when Paul spoke and said, we know that God causes all things to work together for good for those who love Him and are called according to His purpose. So, this, this should be the, the root, the foundation of our joy is our relationship with Him. That's a fact that the world doesn't understand. Okay? They've been blinded to the truth by the adversary whose great desire is to steal our joy and our blessings. And he doesn't, he doesn't care for a moment if we're momentarily happy or not. No. Okay? Because he has... Listen, Satan is a spirit. Yes. He, has, he has an eternal perspective on life. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to have an eternal perspective on life. Yes. That's why David could say, this breath, this life is but a breath. A mere breath. A mere breath. You know, you, you have to, have, when you set your mind on the things above, when you fix your eyes on Jesus Christ, the author, the finisher, the perfecter of your faith, all of a sudden, things change. Mm -hmm. Because there's something greater than this moment. That's right. And what's greater than this moment is because it says in Habakkuk, I think it is, that God has set eternity on our hearts. Right. See, joy is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, that is the evidence of His presence in our lives. Mm -hmm. And His promise is to deliver us out of all, all the adversities. 
that's a joy that's not dependent on happy circumstances. Right. Happiness, praise God for happiness. I like to be happy. But it's, it can be a fleeting, dependent on a person liking their current mm-hmm. kind of circumstance, while joy is an unwavering attribute of a redeemed life. If that was not true, then how could be the how could these words that Paul spoke be true? You also became imitators of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much tribulation with the joy of the Holy Spirit. First Thessalonians one six. The joy came with the tribulation. Yes. <clears throat> so if, if when things go wrong you lose your joy, well that's that should be cause for you to sit down, re-examine. get back into the Word, re-examine yourself, and have a conversation with the Lord and say, what's wrong? You know, Alice and I, I say, we're just, we're just back together. We've just come back from seven and a half months of traveling overseas. And we've got, we got back and hit the American shores here. We got, uh, the simple truth is, it seemed like everything right away started to go wrong. Yeah. I had booked a, a rental car for when we got back. Um, I booked it a month ago, a month before we left, while we were over in England. Paid for it, had the car all arranged. We were going to pick it up right around the corner from where we are here. You e- even called to check on it. Oh, I, 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 I was all set to go. I confirmed the reservation the day before we landed. We got here, and the three of us, Mark, came, had come down and picked us up at, at the ship in Miami. We went to the place to pick the car up, gave them the papers, and the woman looks at the papers and says, you can't have the car. I said, what do you mean I can't have the car? I said, we paid for it. We reserved it a month ago. She said, well, you have a Florida driver's license. Hello, we're in Florida. And because I have a Florida driver's license in Florida, she said, I can't have the car. Because it wasn't an international yeah. one. Because their their plan was they give a different rate to people who are in England. Much lower rate. Much lower rate. And they assumed that I would have an English driver's license when I got here. Mm-hmm. So that was the first thing. The first of a few things that started to go really, as we say in pear-shaped. England, pear-shaped. Well, there's a few things that went right that was unexpected. Well, the point is everything goes right. Yes. When you understand that all things work together for good. God's going to work everything out. Absolutely. And when you have that assurance, when you believe that, oh, we're talking about faith now, aren't we? Yes, we are. When you have that faith that God will cause everything that's going on to work for good, then your joy is not going to be disturbed. I don't Now, you know, i got to tell you the truth. There may be an unhappy situation when you've made these arrangements and you get there and they tell you, you know, you can't have it because you have a Florida driver's license. We're in Florida, you know. And it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. It doesn't make any sense to us. It can either rob you of your joy or not. And that's what Satan wants to do. He's a, he comes as a thief. He wants to steal the joy that you have. He wants to take a... He, Satan delights. I don't know how he can delight in anything. He delights in misery. Mm-hmm. Satan loves misery. Misery, you ever hear the saying? Misery loves company? Well, he is miserable. So. Well, he is. He is miserable. So, so that word that I just quoted from Paul, just one of a, a hundred places in Scripture. But let me, I wanted to just interject that the, the fact of the, with the joy, and it's not anything that you have to work up in yourself. It's just oh, there. No, it's there. It's just there, and yeah. it just flows. I mean, you don't really do anything about it. You just praise the Lord and thank Him, no matter what the situation. Well, there was a time gone by mm-hmm. when here in Central Florida, Everywhere you went, you'd see orange trees. Oh, yeah. I mean, this was one of the biggest orange-growing areas in the world. That's not true today because of the development. But if you ever went and looked at an orange tree and look at an orange, you will not see that orange on the branch of a tree grunting and groaning and trying to, to produce itself. Joy is a fruit not of you. It's a fruit of the Holy Spirit within you. Okay? Amen. You know, Jeremiah, I, I, I love the, the book of Jeremiah. I mean, it's one of the most, he's one of the most powerful prophets in all, all of the scripture, truly. And he's been called the weeping prophet, and not without cause. I tell you what, when he was told by the Lord that he was called to his ministry, that kings, the princes, the priests, and the people of Judah would fight against him, he knew that from the beginning, right? And indeed they did. 
However, the Lord had also told him that those people, the people of God in Judah, would not overcome him. For I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Jeremiah 1. This is, this is where joy comes from. You know, you have that assurance. Yes. Because God watches over his word to perform it. Look at Paul. I mean, he was beaten, he was robbed, he was stoned, he was shipwrecked, over and over. And yet he said, I walk always in the triumph of Christ Jesus. Circumstance can't overcome you. But we overcome circumstance by our faith. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Well, let me tell you something. The Lord's warning to Jeremiah was not an idle threat no. by any means. No. He was opposed by his own brothers. Mm -hmm. He was beaten and put into stocks by a peace and false prophets. He was imprisoned by the king. He was thrown into a cistern oh. by Jews' officials. He was opposed as a false prophet. And yet, in the 15th chapter of the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah says, Woe to me, my mother, that you have borne me as a man of strife and a man of contention to all land. I have not lent nor have men lent money to me, yet everyone curses me. Jeremiah 15.10. I mean, he was, he was conscious of the fact. That's, that's not a happy situation. I mean, those were not the words of a happy man. Yeah. Yet, in that exact same time, immediately after he said that, he says this. Your words were found, and I ate them. Your words became the joy and delight of my heart. For I have been called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. Jeremiah 15, 16. There was joy in his life. With all of that going on, all of that horrible stuff going on. But where did the joy come from? Where did the joy come from? Where did the light come from? His word, God's word. You know why? Well, that's what we started in this study just a few minutes ago. John the Baptist said, My joy has been made full, made, made complete, because I heard the voice of the bridegroom. When you pick up your Bible and read it, and you read it prayerfully, that is God. Listen, that's the Word of God. That's God speaking to you. And that Word should be able to bring that joy into your life, because you're hearing the voice of the bridegroom. Thank you, Lord. It's not just a dead book. It is alive. And that's it's being treated that way by far too many Christians. Yes. Like it says, oh, okay, I've got to learn this. No, what? You pick up your Bible and start reading, and you need to understand that's God speaking to you. Is he speaking to me? He's speaking to Alice? He's speaking to Mark? He is, but he's speaking right straight to your heart. Yes. Okay. Okay. He, said, he also said he did not sit and going on in that same place, right? He said he did not sit in the circle of merrymakers. And that pain, his pain had been perpetual. Not happiness. That's Jeremiah. Jeremiah. And yet, but the joy was there. Mm. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not against happiness. It's just that my spiritual well-being, and more relevant to this study, my joy doesn't rise and fall right. on the tide of happiness. Mm -hmm. The pursuit of happiness has been exalted and memorialized in the Declaration of Independence here in the United States. Mm -hmm. And a pursuit it has to be because it's fleeting and trenchant. I mean, you got to be chasing it all the time. Oh. Okay? <laughs> People are always chasing after it, and it's rarely, they they rarely achieve their goal. They can't right? get it. There's no, there's no getting You know, it's, it's so, so true. America, I've seen studies, and one of the ones I saw not, not long ago was a Harris Poll survey in 2013, and it said it concluded only one-third of Americans are, are happy, are very happy. One-third. That was, you want to know something? That was a couple of years ago. I bet that's a smaller number today. The Legatum Institute's most recent study indicated that the United States, with its inalienable right to the pursuit of happiness, does not even rank in the top ten countries in the world in overall personal happiness. And the UK, by the way, my dear brethren and sister Oi meet, that falls even further behind in that in those rankings. That's 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 a sad truth. Another recent article I, I read in a science uh, and psychiatry journal noted that antidepressant medications are the most consumed class of drugs in the United States. Let me just tell you this. 
and I, I say this in all seriousness, depression cannot stand in the face of the joy of the Lord. And the joy of the Lord, as Nehemiah, it says in Nehemiah, is, is our strength. That's right. We need to have that strength that only comes from God's joy in our life, okay? Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. If you're, if you're seeking satisfaction and happiness from the world, you're, you're on a merry chase. You really are. You'll be very disappointed. Well, you will be. You know, have you, have you heard the expression in your life, the grass is always greener on the other side? That's because the world lacks contentment. Yes. You're never satisfied with what you have. It's always better on the other side. But for the redeemed of the Lord, that grass that we inhabit is a constant place of contentment mm -hmm. and joy. Because it's written, the Lord is my shepherd. Yes. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Psalm 23. Right? Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> the grass isn't greener over there. Yeah. It's not better over there. The presence of the Lord is the place to be and where you will find joy in your life. Mm -hmm. Okay? Remember Jeremiah. Joy, yes. Delight, yes. Happiness, well, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> See, we've been told in the Word more than once that our joy has to be a constant in our lives. The, the Apostle Paul, think about the things that Paul wrote. We are sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. 2 Corinthians 6.10 Now that sounds like a complete oxymoron. Mm -hmm. Sorrowful, but always rejoicing. Why? Because Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. It says we are to rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Philippians 4.4 4. Rejoice always. This is what it says in 1 Thessalonians 5.16 as we're filming this, we've just passed Thanksgiving here in the United States. A day of Thanksgiving. Uh, I, I had the opportunity to share with somebody today. Thanksgiving is not a day. No. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We're thanks. to be a people of Every Thanksgiving. Day. I, I, you know, I've had so many people over the last four decades come to me and say, you know, I want to know what God's will is in my life. Well, that's easy. God's will in your life? It, because it's written, clear as, as you can get. Matter of fact. Give thanks in all things, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's God's will for you. Yes. It's not a day of thanksgiving. It is a life of thanksgiving. Yes. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Mm -hmm. It should flood your soul. Mm -hmm. it, is not, it is God's work in your life. It's the fruit of His Spirit right. that dwells within your life. You don't have to work at it, you just have to receive it. One of the verses that was said unto me is, What is what is that require of thee? But to love mercy, do justice, do, do justice and walk humbly with, with your God. God. If you are walking with God, how can you be joyless? Well, you won't, but that goes back to the issue of your joy comes from the love you have that's with right. God. The love so that he love. is poor. You show, that's what I'm saying. You show me somebody that's in love, and I'll show you somebody that has joy. Well, you said that happiness is based on circumstances. It is. Worldly circumstances. Well, circumstances. Are joy is based on circumstances, and it's well, the circumstances of your relationship with God. But, but see, that's, a, that's, that's not a circumstance. circumstance. That's see, a relationship. A re yeah. Then it's a relationship. Yeah, yes. it's a relationship. A circumstance is an event. Yes. But when Jesus, you know, we have been saved because of his atoning work. And then he says, I will never leave you nor forsake, forsake you. you. He is always there. It's not a circumstance. It's a, it's a, it is a life. It, it is a choice that you make because he will never leave us. Then if you lose your joy, we've left him. That's right. Well, and you know what? If you lose your joy, you're going to lose your strength. That's right. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That's what it says in Nehemiah 8.10. And if you lose your strength, i got to tell you, the, the devil will beat you up. You lose one, you lose them all. Jeremiah, like Jeremiah, God's word should fill us with joy. And it's the Holy Spirit who is sent to lead us into all truth. John 16, 13. Because the Holy Spirit turns that written word into the living word. Alright? 2 Corinthians 3, 6, Paul wrote, who, who also made us adequate as servants of a new covenant, not of the letter, 
but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Amen. If you if you struggle reading the Bible because it, it's a dead word, that's because where's the Holy Spirit in your life? And if the Holy Spirit, you know, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You want the evidence of a redeemed life? You want to know what true Christianity is? It's your relationship. It is your love affair with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me just tell you something. Christianity is not about pipe organs, padded pews, great big buildings. Christianity is a love affair with Jesus Christ. That's what it is. This is, we are betrothed to Him. Yes. You know, back in the day, that meant you, your relationship was bound. It was locked. It's not like today. Because we get farther and farther away from God's truth. Uh, if you're faithfully examining your own life, we need to see how important the Word of God is to us. We need to see that. It's truly, it has to be our joy and our delight. Do we find it necessary in our daily lives? I mean, that's a, that's a reasonable question. Mm -hmm. Do you find the Word of God to be necessary in your daily life? Mm -hmm. are, are we as diligent feeding on His Word as we are on natural food? Mm -hmm. When Jesus, when, when He was under attack from the devil in the wilderness, He quoted from Deuteronomy and said, he, he answered, he said, it's written, man shall not live on by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. It, it is the evidence of our redemption and the sign of a true disciple of Jesus that we abide in his word. That's what he said in John 8. If you abide in my word, you're truly my disciple. So examine yourself to see if indeed you follow the command. Whoever speaks is to do so as one who is speaking the utterances of God. First Peter 4.11 God has filled you with His Word. He has filled you with His love. He has poured His love into your heart through His, through his Holy Spirit. Romans 5.5 5. He has written His Word on the tablets of your heart. Joy should be the fruit of that. That doesn't mean that everything's going to be hunky-dory and happy in the natural. But you know what? We're to be walking in the supernatural. Amen. We are people above the natural. While we were in England, Alice and I, you know, we buy a car over there to use while we're in the UK and traveling around wherever we are. And we had purchased this uh, 2002 Rover this year. It was really a pretty car. 16, that's 2002, would be 14 years old. Uh, but it was in beautiful condition. And we had just taken it down and gotten it washed. In, in England, it's different than here. They have all these hand-washing places. And... Boy, these guys, they went to work, and they got they do a beautiful job. And the car just looked like a brand new car. 12 years old, or what, 14 years old? 14. Look, looked like a brand new car. And we got out the next morning, I went down, and Alice and I got in the car to drive someplace, and I look, and there is this great big plop of bird poop right on the windshield. So how do you, how do you think I felt? I said, I turned to Alice, and I said, I turned that Alice that way because yeah. you drive on the other side. So. Yeah. I turned to Alice and I said, there, that's proof that God's word is true. And I said, what? <laughs> yeah, Alice said, what? He feeds the birds. <laughs> he feeds the birds. You know? What comes in has got to go out. <laughs> if you look at things spiritually, I promise you, like Jeremiah, you will have joy. You will delight in his word. You will delight in the relationship just because he's speaking to you. And God will speak to you through everything that he has created. That's what it says in Romans 1. When you see, it's not just a matter of saying, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice. Go out and see that sunrise. And you will see the handiwork of God. Go out and watch the sunset. You will see the handiwork of God. Look at the sky. Look at the mountains. God reveals himself through his, his creation. He reveals his divine nature is revealed through His creation. So what am I going to say? Look for God. Yes. Remember, He came and looked for you. You didn't find God. He found you because He searched for you. He wants you to be in love with Him. True Christianity is not about all of the religiosity that we've built upon it. True Christianity is about, and Mark quoted the verse from, from um, the prophet Micah, God just wants to grab your hand and walk along with you and be with you. And your desire should be just be with Him. 
and the joy of the Lord will be there, and the joy of the Lord will be your strength. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God. Lord, there is no circumstance that can overcome us because you have conquered, Lord God. There is no situation, Lord God, that can take that joy out of our lives because that joy doesn't come from the circumstance. Lord, let people see the joy in our lives that they might be drawn to your presence in us, Lord God. We praise you, we bless you, and we thank you, Lord, each and every day for being our God and choosing us, calling us to be your people. So we just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, till next time, God, God bless, bless you, you and goodbye. Bye. So I cherish not old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will play